I actually wanted to talk about one of the coaches today, and it's not Coach Prime, man. Uh, one of the coaches who came for the HBCUs, I think he came from Florida a and You guys can correct me in the comment sections. I'm not above reproach. But um, Coach Devin Reese, uh, Reese Press, you feel me? I'm not good at last names, but I I always just say Devins because I'm not good at last name. But Coach Devins has done a hell of a job, man. Uh, he's been congratulating players. He's been keeping a motivated spirit. And you can see he has a positive vibe. Now, what's been going on is Coach Reese Press basically um had help this weekend. He shared it 13 hours ago. Um, uh, I think it was... 2, 2 a.m. I, I forgot what time, but we all know T.J. Patterson, former Colorado player, um, great dude. He once told Devin, Coach Devin, that is, you know what I'm saying? Always, once a Colorado, always a Colorado. So Devin needed help with moving situations or whatever. So he got help by T.J., who's also ex-player but still family, you know, with the moving situation. I thought we should do a video about it. I seen one of the content creators did a video about Coach Devin saluting great players like um Cameron Simon Craig you know what I'm saying because his last year is coming up I seen coach Evan look we got some of the nations following us right now bro you can see it but um coach Devin said that Simon is a dog and he you know he cheered him up basically because it's the dude's final year man it's gonna be meaningful and, and what he did with TJ after that they went to the Denver Nuggets game I think it was and Bro, it's a lot of activities going on in my neighborhood. Let me just show you right quick. Like it's GTA right now, bro. We in GTA. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of GTA, that's where Coach Devin is not at. But um, he went to the Denver Nuggets game with TJ and I kind of liked that. He shared their experience. He said they ate some good um, um, steak and mushroom. You know, which it sounds like a hell of a meal right now because I'm trying to get back in weights. But um, what I'm trying to tell you, bro, is like the community aspect you see from some of these coaches. You don't see it like fake, watered down. He didn't have any ulterior motive with it. It was really a wholesome moment, bro. Like a coach showing you that he's bonding and building with players of the present and players of the past. As a parent myself, if one of my kids would ever make it in football, I don't want to down their dreams or whatever no matter what sport it is even if it's basketball baseball whatever even if it's a job or whatever and just going academically to school you would like if they go to an environment where the adults behave like an adult and become great mentors bro because that's not said a lot for everything that Deion sanders get and all the disses they throw at him i've been noticing a lot of coaches really been getting passes bro the Nick Sabins of the world were allowed to be let go of doing everything you could that Dion couldn't. Meaning that the things that Dion Sanders got called out for, they talked down on him for, all these other coaches got away with way worse. I have a video being uploaded soon for you guys. It's in the works. I'm editing. And you're going to see all the proof how the media picks and chooses with their fake outrage everybody bro it's amazing how they quickly forget on the coaches they root for doing that they even de demonize players that coach like les Miles was going back and forth with and all these other coaches clemson coach the espn pundits the fox sports pundits they demonized the players that the coaches was going back and forth with why they didn't do that with Deion sanders it's Deion Sanders is a keyboard warrior, said a keyboard warrior rider named Blake Top uh, Top Meyer. Sounds like he topping Myers for real. I'm going to keep saying that. It's amazing. It's always the weird names talking the most ish on the Internet. With a name like Top Myers, you would think you have some professionalism about you. You calling Deion Sanders a keyboard warrior while you have over 30 something hit pieces talking down on the coach. I beg to differ. Have you ever wrote these other type of bashing articles on any other coach? Because you were a Tennessee writer. You gave Josh Heupel so many excuses with the investigations that was going on. You barely talked about the Georgia in investigations and the death that they had over there with Kirby Smart. Yeah, the media don't want to talk about that. Kirby Smart literally had players dying and getting arrested. Where is that for Boulder? But all, they, they they talk about Deion Sanders. You're, you're thinking players are, are dying over there or something. The way they speaking about it is World War VIII, skipping past all the rest. So it's good to see a coach like Devin Repress, 
You feel me? Giving love to former players like TJ Patterson, which had a good heart when he was on the team. I remember them from a lot of the well-off media, you know what I'm saying? Which shows you the camera is needed. Some of these players who don't have a major impact like that, th those footage are going to be remembered for the rest of, like, your life, bro. Like Deion Sanders said it, unlike these other coaches, 90% of you players are not going to make it to the NFL. It would, it would be bit beautiful. If it was like the video game, since we're having um, NCAA, well, EA Sports, NCAA Football 25 is coming back. And like, like almost, I remember when I played the game, probably 20 players or more would get drafted on my teams because we upped the ante and, and hijacked the outer brutes. This is real life, bro. You have to think about your, your life skills after playing football. I don't personally know what TJ is doing. I don't think he's in the NFL if he's just chilling around. I could be wrong. It is the off season. So I'm not, you know, don't, don't bash me, y'all, if I didn't know that part of TJ. You feel me? But it felt good for the coach. And that, that's why I'm highlighting the coach. Because had the coach not tell us about TJ and what's going on, would you really know what's going on? So I, I, I'm impressed by that, bro. I like that a lot because you have a coach highlighting a player who's no longer at the university, but this is an alumni. And that young player is welcoming an older coach and giving him the help that you would expect from students slash athletes, man. Because I know they're getting NILs, but they're still students slash athletes. Amateurs, but still students slash athletes, man. So that humble beginnings of respect. Tasting that humble pie is everything, man. And you can see the staff that they have around in Colorado. A lot of people leave and don't talk bad about Dion. You don't hear anybody in the media bringing that up. But because of Xavier Smith, uh, um, Jaheim Ward, uh, the likes of Bishop, uh, I'm talking about the cameras are tricky. <laughs> then you don't belong in the NFL if you weren't about cameras being tricky. Just weird arguments, bro. Outs in make no skill. Talking about he, he, I felt emotional, like crying, and, and prom didn't get me pregnant. All these weird, like, ain't you a football player, my guy? And then you got Dylan Edwards throwing shade at Shador, talking about I want to go somewhere with better quarterback play. Dude, they gave you the ball during third and one situation. You couldn't convert it. Just like Sean Lewis. No wonder they demoted Sean Lewis. What are you doing putting a five foot five or five foot six, 160 pound back at the third and one position, bro? I'm going to keep bringing that up because I was baffled by that. Is Sean Lewis literally sabotaging the season on purpose? Why would you even put, and if you cared about Dylan Edwards and all you D riders, how come y'all ain't calling out the coordinator for putting Edwards in that position? But he want to say, we, you, you want to go some more for a better quarterback. I ought to give you respect. If you call Shador by name, all you little cowards, I would respect more if y'all say names. You feel me? I don't know, man. Dudes like Kermani is surrounded by all these females. Man, we're going to get to that. Y'all stay tuned for my next video. It's going to be his sister still talking. After all this going on, the sister is still talking. You would think she got the football pads. Hell, she got more mic than Carmani, it seems like. Man, look, I'm out, man. Salute to Coach Devin, man. I, I, I love what I'm seeing from you, Coach. A dude like me, have humble beginnings, and I respect everything that you can say about all that. Blessing to the kings and the queens, man. Uh, um, hey, man, much love to everybody who support us, man. I try to talk and speak to everybody as quick as I could. Much love to the real, and y'all always going to feel with the still, man. And that's not the whammy. The still is the heart, man. That's the strongest part of your body. That's, that keeps it ticking, right? So keep pumping the energy and motivation into yourself so you can accomplish anything in life. And that's what's not being said to these so-called dudes that grown men and women keep trying to call kids. Man, look, man, I'm DJ Blessed, one of the best one. Love your family, love your kids, and stay blessed.